everybody um, and welcome to Hills Road's um, virtual open evening. I'm going to be talking to you this evening about media studies and my colleague Caroline is going to be part of this uh, as well with us and she's going to be answering some questions. So the format of the thing is that I'm going to talk you through the course, um, you know, give you some sense of what it would be like to be a media studies student at Hills Road. And then we're going to have some questions and answers at the end. So my, Carol, uh, my colleague Caroline is here with us now, which is wonderful. And if you think of a question as I'm going through, please do feel free to pop it in the, the Q&A bar. Right, so some of you may have studied media studies before, some of you may not. Um, this is a course that welcomes students who have done GCSE, film studies or media studies or who haven't, it's for everybody. You know, we have a, a three week induction at the beginning of the course, which pulls everybody up to speed. So please don't think that if you haven't studied the, the course before, then you won't be, uh, won't have access to the course. You absolutely will. Um, so let's find out about media studies. Right, so um, why study media studies at Hills Road? Well, there's a whole host of reasons why you should study this, this wonderful area that's media studies. Um, it's, it's about challenging concepts, isn't it? You know, we live in a media saturated world. We encounter media forms and media texts all the time. This is a course that empowers you, gives you the skills to be able to look at the media around you and to question it and to challenge it and to um, counter some of the assumptions around it. So the course teaches you to challenge concepts. It teaches you about concepts and also how to challenge them. You know, it's, a, it's about giving you a voice, you know, a voice to encounter the you know, enormous variety of the media world around you. You'll be engaging in debates um, you know, we have a lot of debates in the classroom. Now, these may be debates around particular media texts. They may be around media concepts, media theories. One of the differences between GCSE media studies and A-level is that the A-level courses tend to have a lot more theory and, you know, theoretical constructs within them. So one of the other things we do with you is to um, help you understand different theories, um, help you understand how to use those particular theories and also to uh, evaluate the theories, not just to take them as, as read, as wrote, but to, to use them and to apply them to particular texts in an informed and an evaluative, evaluative way. It's a course that teaches you to think independently. Um, you know, we have, there's lots of opportunity for you to offer up your opinions. You know, as I said, this is a media saturated world. You know, you are young people in this world who have a lot of access and a lot of interaction. Some of you are prosumers, you consume media as well as make it. So, you know, we want you to think independently about you know, how you encounter those texts around you. As I said before, it's about question, questioning assumptions too. It's all about giving you a confident voice within this world. Books change the world, yes and readers change the world, but texts change the world. Um, the kinds of texts that Caroline, Caroline and I will be looking at with you are everything, which we'll go through in a second, from newspapers to radio to music video to uh, video games. All of those are texts. All of them have the capacity to uh, maybe change the world, maybe change the way people perceive things, and you will be looking at um, you know, the kinds of meanings that are generated and then the kinds of reactions that audiences have. So what we want is to, um, to help you to become this, this kind of wonderful, confident, vibrant media critic. Caroline, do you want to add anything before I have, um, before I go on to the next slide? No, I think you summarised everything there perfectly. Um, I think just emphasising the variety on the course is, is really important. So, as you said, me, the media world is a saturated world, and so that's what makes it really exciting to study as a course. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay. Right, so, um, now, so Caroline's mentioned the course, you know, it is an incredibly varied course. So, 
what I've got here for you is a sort of overview. Um, we won't be able to go through exactly everything that's within it, but as I said before, you know, we have a, a, a clear induction that takes you through all of the different texts as an introduction and also shows you some of the, the theories that we're going to be encountering so that when you get to the real, the actual course, you feel quite confident that you know what you, what, what's to be expected. So there are three components of the course. Uh, two of them are exams. One of them is coursework, um, NEA, uh, non-examined assessment. As so along the bottom are some of the texts that we do. So I will go through this with you. I won't probably remember all of the texts in here. If I, if I miss one out, then you know Caroline can um, can help us out with that. But you know you need to know that this is a course where you know if you are a fan of radio, there is radio in here. Um, we look at late night women's hour. If you are interested in music videos, well, there's a wonderful part of the course where you do a comparative piece between um, Vance Joy's Riptide and Beyonce's Formation, which is down here. You know, and you're looking at the structure and the content and the impact of music videos. You look at newspapers. Um, so if that's if print based media is something that really excites you that you may have done before then you will um, have a, a mirror front cover and a Times front cover and be looking at you know, the different kinds of media language that's used on those, the different sorts of representations, you know, how, how politics and issues and events are being presented. So that might be something that's you know, of particular interest to you. Um, other kinds of texts that we look at, you have advertising here. Um, there's some examples at the bottom. So this is a uh, pretty kind of famous um, Tide advert from the 1950s, 60s, Caroline, I can't remember, 50s or 60s, mm -hmm. 50s. Yeah, it's with a very particular um, representation of women on the front of it. And if you can see that, you, you'll understand exactly what I mean. Video games, we look at the Assassin's Creed franchise. So you'll be looking at things like the evolution of different character types. You'll be looking at the different platforms on which you can um, consume the video game. Um, you might be looking at the ways in which the franchise has evolved in order to still, still be relevant. It always wants to be relevant. So even in that one component, you can see you've got advertising, music videos, newspapers, radio, video games, all sorts of things, film marketing, we look at the uh, two very different texts. We look at, hi, Millie, Lily. Hiya, hi. sorry, I couldn't get on, but I'm here now. <laughs> so Lily is um, a top, you know, fantastic media studies student, so she's going to help us. We're just talking about the course, Lily. Yeah. So film marketing, um, you would look at I, Daniel Blake, which is a sort of independent, ideologically driven um, piece by famous uh, auteur director Ken, Lo Ken Loach. And then you would look at Black Panther, obviously a much bigger budget film um, and part of a, its own kind of franchise and its own particular um, Marvel Universe, superhero world. Component two, um, is another exam. Uh, you have three particular areas in there. So television in the global age, this is where we get to TV. And the text that you'll be looking at are two detective shows, one of which is Life on Mars. Um, this is something which is set both in the contemporary world and also in the 1970s. Its, uh, it's follow-up is called Ashes to Ashes. So you can see the David Bowie connection there. Um, but we compare that to a, a sort of uh, neo, not neo noir, Scandi noir piece, sort of Norwegian, Swedish uh, production, which is called The Bridge, which is a much darker kind of piece. So that's for television in the global age. Um, magazines, well, we look at uh, mainstream and alternative media. So you would have to have a look at a, a text from the 1960s, which is Women's Realm. And compare that to a, a very different sort of countercultural um, piece uh, magazine called Huck. And you would look at that for things like use of media language, use of representations, um, and impact on audiences. And media in the online age, 
obviously this is probably the uh, the most accelerating type of media area that you're going, going to be looking at and we look at uh, zoella as a text and also attitude magazine online so those are the two exams i mean and the breadth in there is quite extraordinary i mean they, these are wonderful texts it's really exciting to do them um, as comparative pieces, but also to kind of cover that range. The non-examined assessment, you will be making a music video um, and a magazine that goes alongside that. And that's your 30%. So 35% component one, 35% component two, 30% um, for the coursework. It's a very exciting course. Uh, Caroline, if I missed anything? Um, I don't think so. Just that obviously the briefs for the coursework do change, don't they? So, you know, there might be other options when the students arrive. So that's equally as exciting. Yes. And as you said, there's just something there for everyone, really. My favourite bit is probably um, the television in the global age. I love teaching that. So, but, you know, we have enthusiasm for all our texts, really. There's always something gripping about all of them, so lots to enjoy, really. Lily, what's your favourite bit? Um, I think I like looking at the music videos, and the, I like I'm liking make, making the magazine for the coursework. I think that's my favourite part. Yeah. Yes, excellent. and it's wonderful, isn't it? I mean, it's, I think as Caroline was just referencing, you know, it might be that we don't do a music video, but this is what uh, students are doing at the moment, um, but it will still be a creative project mm -hmm. and give you an opportunity to really um, bring the sort of skills and knowledge into a more, uh, you know, a vibrant and creative form. So that's the course, um, I'm just going to move on. Now we do have students who do both media studies and film studies. They are different enough to be able to, um, you know, be discreet for the students. Um, if you want to go into that kind of world anyway, um, it may well be that you fancy doing both courses. Now, the, if you are interested in film studies, I'm doing the film studies talk next at seven o'clock. But just as a sort of basic comparison, um, the film studies course, in the media studies course, there's only one part where you study film and you don't study film texts. You study uh, film marketing. So that's where you would look at I, Daniel Blake and Black Panther in terms of the way they have you know, unique selling points and what kind of strategies they use to market themselves. The film studies course is very different. Obviously, it's um, entirely film driven. You would look at all sorts of aspects of film, including silent cinema. Um, it tends to offer you a really lovely chronological route through film. So everything from silent cinema through um, US and UK blockbusters, looking at independent film, um, you know, looking at documentaries, uh, looking at contemporary films about conflict, looking at spectatorship debates, maybe, um, different sorts of narrative theory, doing more film analysis. The crossover is things like some of the language that we would use to analyse a film. So if you're talking about cinematography, um, that's as relevant, isn't it, to a, um, uh, a television, TV in the, global, uh, in, yeah, in the global age. So some of these things are crossover, but not the content, maybe some of the language, and maybe some of the skills. But if you are interested in film, then come to the next talk. Right, so um, what skills will you gain doing the media studies course? Well, huge amounts of skills. Um, they are many and varied. You will have an excellent ability to engage confidently with any media text. It's important, isn't it? You know, we, as I said before, we live in this world where media is all around us. We're consuming, we're producing, we're doing all of those things. Um, we don't just sit passively in front of it. As a media studies student, you are, you will be confident in your uh, address and challenge to whatever it is. Even something that you might consider at the beginning outside your comfort zone, by the end of it, you will be debating with the rest of them um, about newspapers and radio or whatever it is. Um, a comprehensive understanding of a wide variety of media-related theories. So there is a vast number, quite a few media theories that you will look at on the course. 
Um, they cover all sorts of things from you know, how identity is constructed, looking at gender, um, looking at audience debates. And what we do with them is we take these theories, they're not case studies in the sense that you just have to reiterate them, or regurgitate them. You use them in order to uh, interrogate and investigate whichever form, you know, whether it's a radio program or you know, an Assassin's Creed uh, franchise example, it could be anything. So you will confidently be able to use those things. You'll also have a look at, obviously, how uh, media texts target their audiences. So um, it's really interesting to try and deconstruct what kind of strategies any given text, and by text I mean, you know, it might be a newspaper or a radio show or a film or whatever it is. So what kinds of strategies is that text using in order to get you to... Um, watch it in the first place and then continue watching it and then maybe watch more examples of it within its um, series or franchise. And those strategies can be anything from the way in which a particular group is represented to um, the particular types of cinematography used to introduce the setting. It's all about deconstruction, you know, deconstructing the text. A confident ability to discuss the ways in which media text represents social groups and events. Now, this is a really fascinating part of the subject. So if you've seen Beyonce's formation, you'll know that in that video, um, the police, there's a particular representation of the police. There's a particular representation of New Orleans. There's a particular representation of race and gender. Um, any given text that you look at will present to you a group of people or an event or an issue in a particular way because the text wants you to understand something about that group in the way it wants you to. So we look at how text creates meaning around particular groups. And you'll have excellent practical skills. Um, so we have really good equipment here. Obviously at the moment it's slightly different because we're in a sort of COVID context and safety is paramount. However, hopefully, down the line, when we can get into the edit suites again, we can get the, um, the cameras out again, um, you know, you, you'll be able to create something really, really rather marvellous. So if you have a practical uh, sort of volition, if that's what you want to do, there's plenty of opportunity to do that as well. So that's the skills. I can see questions coming through, so I'm going to save those for uh, Caroline and Lily, I think, at the end. Right, so in terms of assessment points, um, EMF is English Media and Film, that's our faculty and um, you know within that stu students quite often do multiple subjects. There are six key assessment points each year, so that's when you would have a, a particular task that is a formalised assessment and helps us build a picture of your ability. Now. It's all scaffolded, which means that, you know, we try really hard to give you the maximum possible support to help you achieve. So that scaffolding could be through workshops, it might be through online help, it could be through giving you frameworks for essays, paragraph structuring in the classroom. So you will have as much scaffolding as you need on an individual basis in order to be able to succeed and achieve uh, on the courses. Um, modelling, so um, you know, we would give you at some points maybe some examples of previous work so you could have a look at what worked particularly well. Our classrooms are, you know, they're vibrant. There is not just sit, sit in a classroom with your head down. Um, this is let's interact, you know, let's talk amongst each other, let's collaborate, let's have some peer assessment, um, let's self-assess. You know, obviously your teachers are going to be assessing you, but multiple levels of assessment are always the way for students to improve um, most efficiently. Feedback, there's lots of different uh, ways you'll get feedback. That may well be through um, a one-to-one -one with your teacher in the classroom, obviously comments on essays, um, online. There's plenty of feedback, and not just from your teacher, as is indicated above, um, from your peers too. We like to reflect, we like to evaluate, and we like to reapply, which basically means 
you know, once you have learned something, the best way to you know, continue um, with that journey is then to apply that learning in the next example so that you can then improve. It's nothing like um, feeling that your work's improved. It's a, it's, a, it's a very kind of powerful feeling in education. So those are our assessment points. Um, as I've said before, there's lots of opportunity for support that's in class by subject experts. Um, all of your teachers at Hills Road are subject experts. Um, Caroline and myself are. Um, Anna Martin, who's another teacher who you may well um, have as your, you know, as your teacher, expert. So um, you know, we love our subjects. You know, that's the point. So there you go. There's lots of different opportunities for you to to have support within the department. And the point is, um, it's there. Ask for it. Okay. It helps the students improve. Right, so we work really hard in English, media and film to give you, um, to give students extension and enrichment opportunities. So in the past year, I mean, obviously it's been slightly different, but then uh, these things have been on Zoom, um, uh, not just before the kind of lockdown in college. So, you know, we've had visiting speakers, we've had the BFI in, you know, we had Zoom talks in, in the summer with, um, a music video director, somebody who actually makes music videos. Um, he did some for uh, Jerry Halliwell back in the day, even if you don't like the music. Um, this is somebody who was making, you know, quite big deal music videos. Mark Ronson as well. So students got the opportunity to talk to him. We also spoke to a, um, a TV and film director. Um, who is just about to a piece called The Sun on TV. Um, trips to specific events, obviously um, not necessary at the moment, but those are things that we want to put into place for you. And just before lockdown, the media and film students went to a Water Sprite Film Festival's Day, Creative Futures Day, and they met um, some people from BBC Three, you know, producers, writers, all sorts of people. Um, you know, we'd like to do trip bonkers and activities. Um, you know, with the university and also with HE providers, We're working at the moment with some students from um, Cambridge University and um, ARU who put together a wonderful um, sort of Facebook sort of creative group around Cambridge um, and our students, you know, are very lucky to be able to be part of that. Um, we like to extend you, you know, we want to uh, do some reading viewing lists. So we use Teams, we've been using it in lockdown, these channels, these teams are full of, why don't you watch this, you know, this is coming on later, why don't you have a look at that? Um, this is an interesting piece of criticism, why don't you read it? So we do like to kind of stimulate and challenge you all the time. Opportunities is right for specific publications to become competition judges. So, you know, students have written for Media Magazine and had their work published. Um, you know, students have become and are actually at the moment judging for um, the a, a student film festival, a global film festival, which is wonderful. And we try very hard where we can, you know, in this non-lockdown scenario to, to, to help you with work experience and work shadowing opportunities. So it's not just in the classroom, you know, it's in the classroom with support and then all sorts of other possibilities for you. Right, student performance. We're very proud of this uh, in English uh, media and film. So our high grades, um, and this isn't just this year, this has been some previous years too, 85% um, um, A star to B, so it's quite phenomenal grades, 100% pass rate. So we're very pleased with those. And there you go. This is um, a little breakdown for you of um, the courses taken at university. Plenty of our students, and I know that Lily's planning that, so you can ask her all about it. Um, plenty of our students want to go on to study, um, you know, media in whatever capacity it is at higher education. And um, also, don't forget that media studies and film studies A levels give you access to a whole host of other types of creative industry jobs. So there's a huge percentage of students will go on to 
um, you know, higher education related, media and film related courses. So we're very pleased about that. Right, so um, we are going to now go into a sort of Q&A section. Um, we've got Caroline and we've got Lily. Um, I'm just going to take a sort of little sit back um, and let Caroline lead um, for the last, Caroline and Lily for the last section. So. Thank you. Um, actually, you might want to check in on the first question because it's going to get asked an awful lot. Um, so, the first question is, how do universities view media studies? I read that some unis have it on their non-preferred list of subjects and others have it unofficially on their non-preferred subject list. So we do get asked this quite a lot and um, it's true there are some universities, particularly the sort of Russell Group ones, that don't particularly like media studies, which is a real shame because I would argue that it's one of the most important angles to study in the context of the world that we live in at the moment. So I, I would always say if, if you know you want to go to a specific university, you know, uh, you know you're going to have to get certain grades and so on, always check, check first to see how they view media studies. And obviously if you want to do more that you study media studies or film studies at university, then actually that doesn't matter because we have our own fantastic universities offering amazing courses. Um, there, they really value your able experience and you know, are, are quite competitive in terms of um, the kind of grades that they want you to get. So, you know, that, that kind of only matters if you are looking at a specific university that isn't necessarily a specialist university for media studies. Tanya, I don't know if you want to say any more. Lily, did you hear? Uh, yeah, sorry, I didn't know. Uh, yeah, I, I remember when I was uh, applying or like I was considering what to do. I remember there was a lot of discussion about if media is or isn't um, like looked on well. But I think ultimately I kind of just decided that it has all the content that I know I want to learn about. And it's the area, like the direction I want to go in. So I guess it, it I think because it's a very new subject, it definitely hasn't maybe earned its reputation yet but it's it's very it yeah for me i think it's applicable to like basically everything that surrounds us in life now and if you know you want to go into media or you want to go into marketing or publishing or something like that then it's kind of a key a level to take is and and there's a lot of uh degrees that are based on media studies as well so i you know you have to take all of that into consideration but don't be put off by by that basically. Yeah, absolutely. I think you've asked the question better than I did. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, I think, you know, it depends what you want to do in the future. And as you say, don't be put on um, from what we've heard, you know, rumour-wise. Okay. Um, Caroline, I wonder whether you could just be a little bit closer to the microphone. Is that okay? Yeah. Yeah. Nice to hear what I said. <laughs> uh -huh. Oh, no. It's going to go long now. Um, okay, so the next question is, are there any A-levels you believe in media studies? So, Lily, I don't know if you want to say what you study and, and how you think um, it fits together. I do history and English literature, so the writing part is obviously quite similar. But I think um, history kind of does complement it in a way of you're looking how it develop in media you look how things develop over time as well and compare and um in english you 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 have those you learn similar analytical or all three a levels have similar kind of analytical skills and then writing it down even though it's looking at different things thank you um yeah i would say media studies goes with a huge range of a levels um, so we often have um, students who study media, film and maths, for example, and they might seem an unusual combination, but in the world of work, um, a, a media study student who is also doing maths is really useful. Um, if you think about all the different types of careers that the media offers, um, you know, there are no sort of restrictions as to 
um, you know, the sort of path you can go down. So, for example, if you wanted to be an accountant, why not be an accountant for a television company or a film company or something like that? So I would say media to up studies goes with most things. If I were Chris, I would probably say we really confidence things like English, photography, sort of art-based subjects, but there are no limits. Would you say the same? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, I agree. Okay, so the question that follows on from that is, is it a good idea to take media along with arts and photography? And I would say um, photography is, is a bonus. You're definitely going to use um, your photography skills in media studies, um, particularly in sort of um, practical work, magazine design, things like that. Um, so if that is your passion, absolutely, there's no reason why you shouldn't take them together. Um, I wouldn't say it's an absolute essential, but that combination would be a really nice complementary course. I'm going to go on to the next one if no one's going to add anything. So then we've got, um, are there any trips for media studies? So I will start off by saying that I love a trip. <laughs> I can't get enough trips. Um, so um, obviously we're in a bit of a difficult situation at the moment and our trips have been limited. But as um, Tyler was saying, you know, we've had speakers via Zoom and so on. But yeah, we try and take you to things like the Harry Potter studios. Uh, we go on cinema trips locally. And I've even done trips to Disneyland Paris a couple of times. So who knows what might come up over the next year. But yes, there are definitely trips that we would encourage you to come along to. Okay, so I'm just looking at um, what's next on the list of popular questions. And the next one is, does it cover social media? So um, before, we talked about media in the online age. And that's where the social media element um, would come in. Um, the thing about social media, I suppose, is that it's very fast moving um, that you know, different case studies come up at different times. But um, Zoella is our key um, text, so we'll be looking at her in a bit more detail. Lily, do you remember doing any social media kind of stuff, or is that to come? I don't think we've done that, like, yeah, but I think we've definitely done stuff where social media applies, so film marketing and, and music videos, so basically anywhere where fans interact in the modern age, social media is obviously very important in that. Yeah, the big sort of marketing campaigns that I've done with Blake and Black Panther, so that's a really good way to kind of feed into social media. But um, you know, again, we're really interested in our tech, so any sort of YouTubers coming up and things like that, or just things that are happening in the social media world that find their way into, into lessons. And we do quite like it if you're a prosumer yourself, if you're someone who has got their own YouTube channel or, um, you know, is an Instagram and things like that. We, we like to hear about your experiences and you can bring all of that into the classroom. Okay, the next question is, is there any art involved in media studies? And um, really, how would you say, you know, how much artwork would you say you've done in your coursework? Um, I think uh, because obviously, because uh, of the change, most of my art, as in drawing, is uh, for the storyboard. So usually it's more, seems to be more photography and uh, film based. But uh, with this change in coursework at the moment, there is. Uh, the opportunity to involve art so I guess it depends on what kind what kind of art specifically because photography I think is a big part of media coursework at the moment yeah. um, but drawing a bit less so I think yeah it's definitely more photography isn't it in terms of like thinking about framing shots and thinking about the composition and who's on set and things like that so it's not perhaps art in a traditional sense but you definitely need to be someone who's creative and I would say um, the ideal media student is someone who's um, good at writing essays, good at analysis, but also enjoys that creativity as well. So you need to be a little around it really. Um, okay, the next question is, is there opportunity to choose texts to study? And the quick answer to that is no, not really. 
there is some, when it comes to um, your coursework and you analyse existing texts, there is some choice there that you would, you would be able to um, take. So, for example, if you're making a music video, you might look at some music videos um, of your own choice and study those in detail. But ultimately, the, most of the texts on the course are set by the exam board and, and we you know, have to study those. And you find you know, your friends studying the same course will be studying the same texts. Now that means there are lots of resources out there, so that's really useful. And um, if you go on YouTube, you find all sorts of teachers talking about our set texts. So that's great in many ways. Um, we do try and bring in other examples, though, but it's just that you don't get to choose them as such. You know, we would pick things that we thought would be really useful or interesting at that time. Has anyone got anything to add? No, I'm just quite conscious of time, and I just wondered whether, um, you know, in the last few minutes, um, you know, we could, Lily, you know, you, you're a tremendous, um, you know, uh, advocate for the course and um, obviously sort of an amazing media studies student. I mean, what what's your experience of the course? You know, how, how is it studying media studies at Hills Road? Um, well, I, I think it's just since I was thinking about this, but um, I think the best part is since you're learning about such a wide range of media, it's that you are using uh, so many different ways to uh, to learn about it. So uh, I do history in English, like I mentioned, and even though we're doing different texts, sometimes it, it's obviously the same, a very similar way of looking at everything. Whereas in media, it's your it feels like every lesson you're kind of doing something different or um, analyzing it in a different or you know generally it's the similar theories, but it's you're studying it in a different way and also the chance to look at the theories and the development while then also being given the opportunity to be creative as well. I think that's um, that's kind of my favourite part of doing media and just a general overview over something that's so big now and is only getting bigger. Yeah, so you want to um, study media studies at, at university, don't you? Yeah, I want to do media and communication. Yeah. Yes, and is that something that's something that you want to take through into a career? I'm assuming. Yeah, so it, it's just not hundred percent like where I'm going to go, what specifically, but um, me doing media studies, it, it's definitely given me. Uh, I it's kind of there are more specific things that I learn about, and I'm like I enjoy this more than something else and uh you kind of just dissect what is your favorite part and what you like learning about the most and obviously i enjoyed it enough that everything enough that i want to start to keep learning about everything as a whole but um but yeah it's 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 just it's just all very interesting to me and it's def it's definitely cemented the idea that that's kind of the industry or area because it's a big area yes, to go into wonderful Okay, well, I think um, I think in a, in a couple of minutes we'll probably wrap up. But you know, people watching this, what you can see is three people in front of you who absolutely love this subject, and you know, who have huge amounts of enthusiasm for it. Um, you know, you've got uh, Lily here, who's sort of come into the course, who's absolutely flown. You know, she's a, a wonderful student. But you know, um, have a look at this talk again. You know, put some questions into um, emails centrally if you want anything else answered um, but we really do hope you have a think about the course and that you have at least been given some sense of what it contains um, and yeah come and do media studies at Hills Road you know we love it. Caroline? Yeah absolutely I totally agree um, it's a great college to study it was a great college to work in and um, great fun to study in so yeah. Last word from Lily the most important person uh, oh, well I just don't be afraid to like to do it because I'm I, I keep seeing the questions of all these spheres of what is media useful for and and I think it's just it is it's more useful than you think it is and it's definitely when, when you start to take it you literally see it everywhere and I can't I I read magazines and I watch tv and I watch all this and I it, all the skills I've learned in lessons I'm applying to I'm applying that in my head and don't, I think you shouldn't underestimate 
how useful it is to understand something that you're constantly <coughs> surrounded by, you know? Yes. Wonderful. Okay, well, it's um, goodbye from the three of us and enjoy the rest of your evening. Bye. Bye.